Okay, I'm back in Katawa Shoujo. And when I left off, Hanako was trying to get me to stay with her. I shouldn't try to read anything into the way she's acting right now. I read that aside from alcohol lowering her, her inhibitions, people can react to getting drunk in many different ways that don't necessarily reflect reality. And even without that, there are plenty of ways to interpret what she's saying. As long as she's safe, I'm going to try and get her out of her get out of her room as soon as possible. Hanako hi hiccups again, looking at looking a right mess as she stands and looks downcast in the center of the room. Her personality changed as she drank more and more, and now, all alone in her room with me, her previous brightness seems to have left her. Was she just acting upbeat to make sure we didn't worry? Even if she was, what could I possibly do for her since I do exactly the same thing in regards to my own condition? Distancing myself from my thoughts, I eventually managed to corral Hanako towards her bed, though her attempts to tame the wild sheets on it ends up accomplishing little. Sorry about tonight, Hanako. I know you probably won't remember any of this, but happy birthday. I'm sorry I couldn't do more for you. She looks, up, uh, she looks up at me for a moment. I have no idea if what I actually said got through to her, but any chance to ask is lost as her eyes peacefully close. I just whistled when I said peace. That was kind of cool. I sigh in relief before quietly backing away from her and leaving the room, flicking the light switch off as I go. I hesitate a little before opening the door to Lily's room again, quickly rehearsing what I should say if I get questioned about Hanako. After a few seconds, I still can't come up with anything. I open the door and make sure to get to close it behind me, lest any passing students catch a glimpse of the wine before turning my attention to the two girls at the low table. Akira's casually smiling, smiling as is Lily. I welcome the change from mood in the Hanako's room. Is that you, Hisao? Yeah, I got Hanako to her bed. She's sleeping now. That's good. I have to admit, I hadn't thought she'd drink She'd drink quite so much. Hey, it's fine. She, she's all safe and tucked up in bed now, with the way she is. She awkwardly trails off, though Lily and I would hardly protest. For someone so anxious and fearful, drinking would give an easy out from those constant feelings. I wish I could do more for her. I feel useless. Looking at Lily, I think back to what I asked myself in town. My relationship with her is that of a friend, and has, o and has only ever felt that way, but now I think I know why. Lily, Lily's been there for both Hanako and me since I first met her, but now she's like that for everyone. What? But she's like that for everyone, trying to do her best to make them feel better. With that in mind, then what's the bond between me and Hanako? After rescuing our relationship following the panic attack I inadvertently triggered during class, I feel like we're back to being friends, but now she's on my mind more and more. I can't say I view any other girl quite the same way. But maybe it's just a normal reaction to someone acting like this. Say, Akira. What was that? Oh, that was a yawn? Okay. She yawns before looking at me. It's getting pretty late. You know about what happened with Hanako, don't you? Yeah, Lily told me. I negotiated pretty hard for a break so I could come down and help her, m help make her birthday a, a bit brighter. We get along pretty well. It's surprising to hear that from someone s as extroverted as her, but if Hanako came to know her through li Lily, maybe she had time to get used to Akira. And on that note, I'd better get going. I'm already going to be a bit late as it is. But it's already so late. Where are your arms? Sorry, we got a bunch of work dropped on us, so overtime it is. I think, like, you know how in, like, America's, like, I think the average is, like, 10 hours a day, I think, is average. I think over in Asia, it's, like, 13, 14, so on. It's a long time. Wait, did I read that? She levers herself up, up with, 
up with a grunt and heads past me towards the door. Just before she leaves, she turns back towards us. You haven't forget you haven't forgotten about the time for the flight and all the rest. Don't worry, I have everything ready. It's just a matter of packing when it gets closer to the time to leave. At a girl. I'll see you guys later then. And with that, she disappears through the door with her hand held high in farewell. Your sister is something, all right. I probably should have thought that comment through before saying it. Regardless, Lily seems quite amused by at my appraisal. Uh, you okay after all that drinking? Not wasted and just hiding it well? I assure you, I'm quite alright. I can moderate myself. You seem quite self-possessed as well, so if I do say so myself. Yeah, well, I guess your moderation implies to me as well. Isn't that what she just said? With a little hesitation, I take a seat at the table in front of Lily. I want to address this directly, if for no other reason than to settle my own thoughts. I've been meaning to ask this, but it took me a while to make up my mind. Do you have any idea about what triggered that panic attack? I gathered it was something to do with her birthday, but I don't know anything more. Even Akira was being really careful around her, so I assume she knows as well. Lily's smiles drops, the gaiety of the birthday party now well and truly over. To be honest, I'm not sure of all the details myself. Hanako told you that she was in a house fire. She told me as much after we met and spent a lot of time together. Other than that, she quite simply never told me. She never told you. Assuming the worst, what does she have back to what does she have to look back upon? A life of isolation and possibly even the death of her family? Maybe even going as far as blaming her existence for their deaths. Even thinking about what little I know of Hanako's past is bleak. To have lived through the, all that, and to live on those whose memories must be infinitely worse. Lily looks similarly depressed, but I can see her rebuild at least some of her composure before my eyes. I get the feeling that both of us are talking more frankly than we might otherwise do thanks to the wine, but it feels like just talking this out is a good thing anyway. I feel kind of helpless about it. When it's put like that, what can I possibly do for her? I'm not wholly sure I, I should tell you this, but Hanako told me that you visited her, her the day after we both went to check on her. I must admit, I did not predict she would take such a step so quickly after what happened, nor did I s expect you to. I think it was a nice gesture on your part. It wasn't much, really. It was just, at times like this, I sometimes think it would be better if we never had to leave Yamaku, or at least this town. Things are so much easier without others around. I didn't expect Lily to look quite so troubled at what I, at what I say, and for a while she looks lost in thought. She moves to speak, but stops herself as soon as she does and rethinks. It's a bit off-putting. I think... Tell me, do you have anything planned for Friday evening? Friday evening? 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 No. Isn't your flight to Scotland the next day? I don't think it would be a good idea to tie yourself out before you even get there. I'll be alright. You don't need. You needn't worry about me. I'll do this tomorrow evening, but I imagine Hanako will be f feeling rather off for a while. The thought of how she's going to be tomorrow makes me grimace. Maybe we should count our blessings that she didn't end up simply throwing up from drinking so much while having such a low tolerance. Well, I'm going to be able to attend whatever you're planning. What is it? Nothing unusual, I assure you. Just a little excursion. And you'd better be off, I saw. I can't imagine it's long until curfew is here. Oh, damn. Curfew. I'd completely forgotten. I look at the clock next to Lily's bed, but it seems to be some oddity without written numerals. Oh, yeah. She can't read a clock. Which, suppo which I suppose she makes sense, given Lily's condition. Not wanting to risk a haughty security p patrol giving me a scolding, I get up and decide to go to my dorm, as she says. Well, then. Ah. Uh, it's late. Curfew's coming. 
I guess I'll see you in Hanako tomorrow. Assuming that both of you managed to get up in the morning. Thank you for your concern, Haisao. Until then. With that, I make my way out of her door into the hallway. I hope her idea will be a good one. Oh, I finally downloaded the soundtrack to this. There is a ton of songs, like, I would say at least 30. Oh, who's that? The hammering of a fist against the door feels like a nail being pounded in my head. Is it Kenji? Once, twice, three times, I let out a long, annoyed breath and bear it while pressing my eyelids shut, fervently hoping for whoever it is to just go away. Kenji, I haven't seen you in, like four hours and I like that so please go away I feel pretty damn awful my face feels like it's cast out of lead my arms feel heavy and I feel very queasy it's been it's been like this since I woke up half an hour ago and I can't summon the energy to pick myself out of bed so this is what they call a hangover I wonder if perhaps this is the best treatment for teenagers who do desperately want to try drinking as a way to feel like an adult. Considering how unpleasant this is, it's not something I want to repeat. A series of thumps ring out again, reverberating around the small room. I wish they'd just give up already. I have no intention of getting out of bed for them. Seconds pass, turning into minutes. Since no more knocks are coming from the door, whoever it was must have left. Thank goodness. Looking to my clock, the time when I really should think about getting dressed and ready for classes approaching. I don't think I can manage it, though. I hate cutting class, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get much done at this rate. I can tell I look like a mess without even needing to look in the mirror to confirm it. What a... Oh, to confirm it, too. The morning rush is giving me enough time to stand outside the classroom for a little while without looking too suspicious. I hope that Matau doesn't ask any awkward questions about my not attending school yesterday. I was sick, that much is true. It's just the reasons for it I have to hide. Confident I can get by with my a tactical omission of certain truths, I stride into the classroom doing my best to appear normal. The instant I open the door and take a single step in, I can feel a dozen eyes looking at me. There's no way I'm imagining this. They're not even making any attempt to hide it. Oh, the Hanako's here at least. My eyes take a quick sweep around the classroom and I spot Hanako. We make eye contact momentarily before she looks down and stares very hard at her desk. Did she spill the beans? Mattel may be okay as far as teachers go, but underage drinking on campus is not exactly something that would be taken lightly. I look to him with some trepidation. Feeling better today? Yeah, thank you. He motions for me to take my seat, my legs feeling like sticks as they carry me there. This is, this is going to be a long day. As soon as the lunch bell rings, I'm on my way to Hanako's desk to ask her what's going on. Hanako, did you tell... She looks at me and shakes her head. That's a big relief. It's just... Just... Well, well hello there, Hichan. It's nice to see you again today. Oh my gosh, I hate that face. That's so scary looking. I grimace and turns towards the un unmistakable voice coming from behind me. That was way too a beat a tone to feel comfortable, even for Misha. Misha's happy smile is nothing out of the usual. Shizun's, though, is a very bad sign. The, the one she wears has become notched into my brain as her I've got you seven ways... I've got you seven ways from Sunday smile. I don't understand that expression, but okay. Hi, Shizun. Misha, you, uh, look happy to see me. Not feeling well yesterday, Hichan? No, no, I wasn't, but I'm feeling better now, at least. That's good to know, Hichan. Why do I get the feeling that Shizune is leading me into a trap? Just run. I say, I'll run, grab Hanako, and run to the tea room. You sound like you're not being completely serious. Oh no, Hichan. We're genuinely pleased that you're all better now. Shizune is positively overflowing with happiness. There's only one reason why she would be like this. Oh no. 
In fact, we were quite worried about you, after all. You, Hanako, and Lily were all absent from class on the same day. Yep, she's got us. So thoroughly that so thoroughly that I, all I can do is sigh in defeat. I guess I have I guess you have your own theories about this. Could you just kind of not tell anyone? It's a bit late for that, Hichan. Are you kidding me? I suppose she's right considering the looks I got as I entered class. Still, the thing still things only seem to be at the level of vague suspicion rather than outright accusations, so we'll probably be fine. Hanako's face sinks a little further. Such, such attention is troublesome enough for me, let alone for her. Going by Shizune and Misha's reactions, I think they notice this as well. The only reason why we're giving you such a hard time is that you ignored us yesterday morning. Yesterday morning? It takes a while to recollect what happened then, given the haze induced by the generally awful stay I was in at the time. Yes, sir. Oh, was that them knocking? Oh, right, the knocking. That was you two? It was, and you left us there for ages after we'd taken all the effort of coming to your dormitory early in the morning. Sorry, I was having a problem with nausea? Problem with the nausea. With nausea. They're not buying it. I can't blame them. Shizune's head drops in resignation before she reaches into her pocket. Something white and yellow can be seen sticking out a little. It, as she pulls it out, it turns to be an envelope. Turns out to be an envelope with very bright decorations on it. 